giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with Striker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Striker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.striker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Infimidation. Tonight, due to the postponement of the first robotics competition season, we'll be wrapping up the events that did happen in FIM this 2020 season here in Michigan, as well as report for the final top 10 based off the final top 25 voting, as well as our host final top 10. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Nick Jr. I'm Freddie. I'm Steve. And I am PJ. Yeah, welcome back, PJ. We haven't seen him all year, so glad to see him back. Uh, we also have a few giveaways from the FIM show. Uh, Tyler, what do we have tonight? Oh, we have one giveaway for this one and a couple others for the next one, if you're watching live as well. But from our friends at Rev Robotics, they're giving away the Blinken LED driver, or, uh, yeah, driver, Blinken LED driver uh, and 5-volt uh, attachment for it. So the Blinken LED is a compact LED driver module that simplifies controlling both 12 volt RGB LED and five volt addressable LED strips. Long story short, plug stuff in, get cool colors out of it, right? Will we all agree on that's that's what this does? Correct. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so check out the Blinken, guys. It is really cool. Have you seen uh, some bots that have had this? Uh, they, if you're looking for something that really could be a cool off-season project for you uh, and get some uh, nice, aesthetically pleasing features to your robot, uh, check this out in here. We'll put the link uh, in chat, uh, and then you, we'll have an opportunity to draw for this a little bit later on during the show. Don't forget, you need the following subs get 5x luck. Good luck, everybody. Enjoy Infimidation. Thanks for those giveaways, Tyler, and thank you to our friends at Rev Robotics. Uh, I'm interested to see what they are able to provide for the 2020 control system coming up here. Uh, so further, let's go ahead and start our discussion topic. Uh, overall, uh, what do we think of Inf Infinite Recharge and FIM? Um, I know that we only got to see two weeks, but uh, what did we think of the game, and uh, how do we think it would have evolved and possibly you know, evolve um, into the summer if we are to continue in the summer? Freddie, go ahead and start us off. Well, look, I mean, I've said time and time again that I love this game, uh, but this season, despite being cut short for the time being, uh, has really truly put into perspective uh, first for me. Um, we left the team that my brother helped start back in 2014, um, of which I was a three-year of alumni uh, for a variety of reasons. And we joined 5662 Cardinal Commanders in Dryden. This is a team that for so long um, had been a team that you sigh when you see that you have a match with them and you rejoice when you see you have a match against them. Uh, so our number one goal heading into the season was just to make robotics fun. However, the first day of competition at Kettering was anything but fun. Uh, we went home Friday night, 40th place, uh, dead last. And I had honestly felt like I failed our students who had worked so hard and were clearly mentally and physically drained after what proved to be a very tough day. After a night's rest, we came back Saturday and went two and one in our day's qualification matches, making playoffs on the fourth alliance. We ended up getting bounced in semifinals, but it felt as though we had won the event. All of a sudden, it really became clear to me that I had lost sight of the team's goal to just have fun. Seeing how the students reacted when we not only made playoffs, but also beat the number one alliance in the first semifinal match made it all worth it for me. And it reminded me why we put ourselves through this. So anyway, enough storyline, enough story time. Uh, I, I made it clear that I love this game. Um, and I'm sad we won't get to see it played on a world championship level and maybe even state level. Nick, what have you got uh, regarding Infinite Recharge? Yeah, so I mean, if you go back to uh, one of our preview shows, uh, I personally was a pretty big critic of the game. I wasn't a huge fan of it, um, but you know, the, the tides have uh, kind of turned. Um, I've I've sort of came to uh, enjoy the game. Um, that probably helps because you know my team actually had a decent robot this year, but um, so that definitely helps it. But um, overall, I think it was a good game, and I'm sad we're not going to get to see it played on uh, that kind of level. So, uh, PJ, what do you think? Um. 
overall, I'm feeling pretty positive about this game. Uh, it's hard to really form an opinion until reaching the end level of play. Um, after only two weeks, it's still hard to say. After two weeks, like, we don't know. Um, I generally don't decide whether I like or dislike a game as a whole until, like, district championships as a general rule. Um, this game has potential, but it also has sort of the potential to devolve into auto and endgame focused play uh, with the middle teleop section just sort of being about staying close enough and not really mattering in the long run. Uh, at this point in the season, so once again, only two weeks, so we can only say so much, even the best cyclers were only doing about a climb's worth of goals in teleop um, among teams in our top 10, which we'll get to later. Um, they were cycling around, they were making about 25 points in shots individually um, per match. Uh, with the top five cyclers doing about 35 points, so still a little bit more than a climb. But two climbs would equal that, you know, if your opponents put up two climbs, you put up one climb and a bunch of cycles, it equaled out. And so if you were against two teams who could put up a handful of balls and both climb and you were by yourself, um, they would end up winning the match. So this was, uh, this was, you know, super evident in district play. We saw that happen all the time in Qual's matches, in Elim's matches even, where the climbs were all that mattered. Um, and it would have been interesting to see how that shifted in later season, if it would have shifted, um, if it would have become sort of like 2017, where all that mattered really was Auton and Endgame until literally Einstein. Um, or if it would have been more like 2018, where, yes, Auto was super important, but towards the end of the season, those Teleop players did start to be able to make up for a poor Auton showing just by pushing their uh play to the limit so yeah for sure would have been interesting but <clears throat> hard to say at this point yeah so like, like freddie i i really loved this game um really enjoyed infinite recharge i really hope that we could see this game played again here in fin um i think it was fun to watch as a spectator i think it was fun to call as a game announcer and it was really fun to play as a team um you know, like Freddie also, we had a really disappointing start to our day on Friday. Um, and they turned it up, made a great showing Saturday, getting picked by the First Alliance, and ended up with a gold, silver, cling bling as the event winner and EI winner. A um, little story, too, like Freddie. When our family first joined in that uh, 1684 in 2015, our team was – we like to joke that we are great losers, that we – we really were consistently in the bottom ranks of the of the events generally – but our kids always had a great time. They always had great high spirits. They always had fun. And that's really what this is all about, fun and learning. Um, but when things started to improve, they started to play better and win, that is contagious. And they really started to work even harder and pull together as a team because that, they really enjoyed that. So I'm going to miss this game. I really hope that we get to see this played more this summer and at a high level at an MSC type event. I'm very disappointed that we don't, we won't get to see this played um, on, a, on a world level, but, you know, it kind of is what it is. Um, it, you know, there's other things that are more important, I guess, than robotics, unfortunately. Um, so real quick, before we head into some team-specific breakdowns, we've all got a team that we're going to kind of spotlight. Um, 3322 Eagle Imperium from Ann Arbor sent us their reveal video, so let's check that out. I mean, I love that robot. That's a cool robot. Thanks, guys, for sharing your reveal video. I'm really disappointed that we weren't going to, going to get to see you guys at Lansing. So um, I guess uh, we're going to move on to the team team blip here. Yeah, so uh, moving on, uh, like Steve said, um, each of us hosts are going to spotlight a team that, uh, that might have impressed us this season or kind of just uh, overall enjoyed their machine just to kind of 
uh, give some people uh, a little bit of a shout out. So, uh, Freddie, why don't you go ahead and start us off with 2337? Yeah, so I'm going to start us off with uh, 2337, the engine nerds. Um, from the time they dropped the reveal video, uh, this is a world that all of us here at Infimidation were pumped to see. Legacy clearly plays, Legacy, the name of the robot, uh, clearly pays homage to 1717, the Penguineers 2012 robot, which was a proven design that worked well. 2337's bot this year was no different, picking up the win in Kettering 1 and a semifinal appearance in St. Joseph. When designing Legacy, they devoted a great deal of their build season to ensuring jams wouldn't happen since they were already working with a tried and true design. However, despite having such an awesome machine, they also had a great deal of improvements they could have made, especially to their shooter, uh, which was, albeit, deadly accurate and auto from the initiation line. If you saw it in person, they would have, similar to 1717, they'd have a teammate drop balls into their robot, and then they'd shoot usually like five out of six into the inner goal from the initiation line. Such improvements would have really allowed them to dominate at a state and world level to secure their legacy. 1678 has a phrase, steal from the best, invent the rest. And I think 2337 perfectly encapsulated that with legacy. Nick, what team have you decided to highlight for us? Yeah, so uh, for me, it's going to be um, 3538 Robo Jackets. Um, I guess this is kind of a team that, um, you know, has truly come out of the woodworks uh, in the past couple of years, especially uh, 2018, 19, and 20. Um, you know, they uh, have continued to build efficient, uh, efficient machines. Uh, they played at the Southfield District. I uh, was selected by my team, 4130, to play in eliminations with them. Um, they had the best auto at the event. Uh, 4130 and 3538 were the only two teams, I believe, trying for a six-ball auto. And PJ can fact-check me on that. But At um, Southfield? Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, uh, they were consistently hitting five. Uh, Forty-one three was consistently hitting th uh, for sure three, and you know four to five, depending on what it was. But um, so picking uh, them was kind of a no-brainer for us. Uh, you know, we, we complemented each other really well and had a really good match together. So a um, few things I like about the robot: um, one, extremely fast. Uh, they took the, the, the design constraint and uh, decided to go low, uh, but man, that driver can zip under the color wheel. Uh, it, it's very entertaining to watch and. By the end of Southfield, the Jackets were playing just over 20 balls a match and climbing, so um, that didn't really compare to anybody else uh, at the event. So, uh, number two, their fire rate is, I mean, damn near perfect. Uh, it's see, you know, I see too many teams that are trying to fire too quickly, and you know, they're just bouncing out of the goal. You know, a lot of these, uh, some of these elite teams, in my opinion, are shooting way too fast. Uh, but I think Robo Jackets just have that perfect happy medium between, you know, being uh, absolutely, you know have the happy medium between shooting too fast and having the accuracy and they kind of combine those together. So, um, you know, and finally the climber mechanism itself. Um, I know too many people didn't get to see a close look at this robot and get a chance to look at it. You know, unfortunately I'm, I'm assuming uh, the robot jackets are going to be at a bunch of off season events this season. But um, if you get a chance, they have we, a, we may already have a list of like 10. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> so um, they, they, if you get a chance to look at their climber, they have a custom trunk latch that releases the climber. Um, and it, it, it's pretty insane. Um, we got a chance to look at it at Southfield and we're very impressed with it. So, uh, you know, I liked it. And uh, overall, I expect to see big things out of them. Um, you know, in my opinion, uh, I think that they're one of the best robots in the country right now. And I'll stand behind that. So we had we were very fortunate enough to be able to select them at Southfield. So, Steve, what do you got? Well, my team is Nick Jr.'s <laughs> 4130. Um, Richmond Blue Devils, and you know they really stepped up their game this year. They had quite a good robot, quite a start to their season, ranking first overall at a pretty tough Southfield event, and they went undefeated at a perfect 18 and 0. Um, the model of consistency. I mean, their shooter was slow and steady, not slow, but slow and steady, and they just were unbelievable at Southfield. I'm really disappointed we get didn't get to see them more. And that I didn't get to play with them. Hopefully, I was hoping to play with them at MSC. Um, very consistent. Once they dialed their their autons in, they were consistently scoring 10 to 12 power cells per match, um, which is on the upper tier of some of the teams that we've seen play, especially at a week one event to come out of the gate like that. Um, you know, like I said, I'm really bummed that we didn't get to see more of them. And I'm hoping to run into them at some off-season events. They're typically at RoboCon every year, and hopefully if, Absolutely. if RoboCon happens, um, if the world is still in standing in July, that uh, that we'll be back and we'll get to see those guys again. PJ, yeah, what I, about you? 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nick. No, yeah, real quick. I can confirm that the intake was redesigned. So um, I just didn't get a chance to finally get out there. But uh, PJ, go ahead. Okay, so uh, for mine that I want to spotlight, I'm going over to the west side of the state. Um, and I'm looking at Team 1918, the NC Gears, who competed week one uh, up in Traverse City. Um, robot named Taz, which, like its namesake, is a lightning-fast devil, eats everything in sight, and has shown little ability to be stopped. Um, their sort of strengths as a team that I know is best teleop play in Michigan. They average about a full cycle more than anyone else in the top, um, averaging close over 18 balls in teleop versus... Um, like Robo Jackets overall in quals were averaging about 13.8. Um, like I said, it was that was getting pushed up towards the end and in Elims. But so they were averaging about a full cycle more than teams like Robo Jackets or 2767 or 67, who were all sitting around that 13 mark. Um, this was largely due to their use of uh, what we on uh, the Robo Jackets have been called the flood strategy, which is they were waiting, you know, they would score the balls, and then as soon as their opponent was forced to drop them back in, they would sneak through and just like grab five more. And they were just cycling through that flood. Um, so that was just a huge part of why they were able to be so fast. The intake's great. Um, I really like, like, it's one of the best intakes I've seen all year, um, if not the best. Um, some improvements that I think they probably would have been looking to make. Um, mechanical issues, the reason they ended up finalists in Traverse City, they died twice in the Traverse City finals. Um, I don't know whether they've identified or fixed the issues that caused them to die twice. Um, I heard it involved their swerve modules. Um, I have no confirmation on that. So I assume that's something they would have been working on for their next couple events. Um, their Auton play needs a lot of help. <laughs> they would only shoot three preloads and then they move slightly off the line. Um, you know, had no had no fancy autos, which by the end of MSC, you would hope they were probably going to be more necessary. Um, Flood Strat may not work at higher levels of play. Um, as teams got better at protecting that zone because, you know, that zone is protected. If somebody touches you, it's, it's game over if they're in that little triangle. Um, so, but just at Traverse City, nobody seemed to be aware of that fact. So it worked out really well for them. And then one thing I was looking at was you know, they sort of got one of those open hopper type designs. And I was wondering if something like a solid ram from a defender could start knocking balls out. So um, just some improvements I think they would have been working on. I would have loved to see this robot move ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, PJ, I agree with you. Checking in, the poll just ended that Tyler put in there, and coming in first was 1918, uh, second by 2337 and 3538 and 4138 tie-in. Uh, so uh, we got to kind of get going here. We're only doing a half hour in the top 25 starting at 8 o'clock. So um, we're going to go ahead and go into the final FIM top 10. But before we do that, Tyler, um, Tyler's going to take a brief second here and kind of go over about our friends at Striker. And Tyler, take it away. Yeah, it's time to majorly sell out. Let's do it, guys, with a huge Striker ad coming in. No, guys, Striker, uh, awesome company. If you had an opportunity, Striker, Striker, Striker. We'll just say it like 20 times, right? And then we get all of them done, and that's the way we go. But, uh, guys, uh, once again, lots of downtime. If you're looking for internships, co-ops, uh, careers, even if you're just starting, if you're starting to graduate college, or if you're looking for a great new career out there, there is one out there for you. Uh, currently, just in Kalamazoo itself, 52 jobs available, but they have careers all around the world. Uh, Striker, uh, as mentioned before, Nick Jr. and I got the tour of their facility, uh, and wow, what an incredible place. State-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art equipment. They treat their employees like gold, and they will support you for being in first. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about how you can work for a company that truly says, hey, guys, you're in first. We love that. We want you to go to first competitions. We want you to mentor. We want you to volunteer, and we'll support you doing it as an employer. Go check out careers.strykr.com forward slash first. Yeah, thanks for that, Tyler, and uh, thanks to our friends at Striker. So uh, really quick, we're also going to go ahead and introduce uh, the giveaway, the keyword, um, which is going to be uh, hashtag Blinken. So if you want to go ahead and type in chat uh, for the – uh, Rev LED controller Blinken, as well as the 5 volt address LED strip. We're going to go ahead and draw for that shortly, right after our top 10. So it's going to be hashtag Blinken. All right. So now it's time for our countdown of our top 10 uh, teams in Michigan. Uh, so we're going to do two different lists real quick. One of them is going to be the top 10 from the uh, top 25 voting. And then the next one's going to be the ones that the host decided. So let's go ahead and show that slide, Tyler. Uh, honorable mentions, 3534, House of Cards, 548, uh, Stings from Northville. 33, Killer Beast from Auburn Hills. Uh, number 10, 1718, Fighting Pie of Armada. Number 9, 1918, NC Gears from Fremont. Number 8, 67, The Hot Team from Milford. 
Number seven, 2767 Strike Force from Kalamazoo. Number six, 1684 Chimeras from Lapeer. Number five, 3538 Robo Jackets from Auburn Hills. Number four, 1023 Bedford Express from Temperance. Number three, 4130 The Blue Devils from Richmond. Number two, 226 Hammerheads from Troy. And rounding out that number one spot, 2337 Engineers from Graham Blank. Hosts, what do we think about this list? I usually have my gripes about the top 10. Not this time. Good list. I have so many feelings that you're lucky you don't have time to hear all of them. Uh, quickly, 1918 and 67 should be on the left-hand side of that list. No questions. Nerd Sharks and Blue Devils should be moved down. Uh, Robojacks and Bedford should probably swap um, based on talent. Yeah, I'm really happy to see 35-34 House of Cards on the honorable mention list. I, I think 226 is a little too high, but they absolutely showed that they belong on that list by picking up that win at St. Joe. I personally have both 1023 and 226 a little bit lower on my list, and we're going to get into our host top 10 here in just a second. Um, this, So actually, let's just jump into that right now since we're sh kind of short on time. Um, this 30-minute show, by the way, we, we need our hour back. Um, <laughs> this is uh, – so this – Top 10 is a composite of all of our hosts here on Infimidation that all voted. Um, the points that are going to be on the right side here are, are all calculated by teams getting like 10 points for first place, nine points for second place, and so on. So uh, starting at number at number 10, we've got our chimichangas here from Lapeer. At uh, number nine, we've got 3641, the Flying Toasters. PJ is very, very high on them, and I, I love the toasters, but uh, um, they're they're coming in at number nine there with 16 points. The Hammerheads down at number eight. So our hosts were a little down on the Hammerheads compared to the fun community. Uh, NC Gears, I love that team, 1918 in number seven spot. 2767 from Kalamazoo, Strike Force there at number six. Uh, Hot Team, 67 coming in at number five. Nick Jr.'s Blue Devils just eking them out for the four spot there at 4130 uh, in fourth place. And Robo Jackets kind of sitting alone there in third place, 3538. And we had a very tight, tight battle there for that number one spot on our host voting uh, with Engineers coming in in second place by one point, 23-37. And our number one team, as found by the Infimidation hosts, is 10-23 Bedford Express from Temperance. Yeah, so, I mean, overall, good list, I think. Uh, I, I'm happy to see Robo Jackets above me because, in my opinion, they should be better. But um, anyone, anyone else got something real quick to add? Love uh, it. Just, go ahead. No, I love it. <laughs> I'll say the fact that toasters weren't in the real top 10 is a travesty. I'm glad they made our top 10. Yeah, uh, for, I agree. Uh, toasters are definitely one of those elite teams that I think really would have pushed. So, Tyler, go ahead and let's draw for that giveaway. Yeah, PG, I just want to say it's great to have your uh, canon nature back, by the way. Welcome back, man. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so with that <laughs> No, I love it, seriously. Um, so with that said, uh, let's draw for the uh, Blinken, and the winner is going to be Average Joe 6804 Congratulations. Make sure you shoot us a message on Twitch or on Discord. Claim your giveaway. Uh, guys, once again, we're sending you something. You need all your info in order to you know, ship you something. So please do that. Um, if you're watching live, lots more giveaways uh, to do during uh, Top 25 slash 40. Um, so can't wait for that. But thanks again to Reverbox for this great giveaway of the Blinken. Yeah, thanks again, Tyler, for uh, doing that giveaway. And thanks to our friends at Rev Robotics. So um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for tonight. Uh, thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, Fun needs your help to stay live, loud, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, Freddie, Steve, PJ, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. The next show is the FRC Top 25 slash 40. See where your favorite first in Michigan teams landed on this week's FRC Top 25. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.